the most dysfunctional, pathological, power-hungry royal family I have ever encountered in RPG is here. <laughs> and I'm going to show you all about them. The game Blackheart. And as is typical for my indie game reviews, we'll dive into whether this is worth your time and money. Oh, and full disclosure, I got the game key from the developer. It's a top-down action RPG set in a magical world where you play as Azrael, a young man navigating a cruel and unforgiving reality. Not joking here. His whole family sees him as a useless or consider him as a threat. But there is also a reason for that. Anyways, the game centered around the other spirit powerful beings capable of granting world-changing magic to those they deem worthy. But there is a catch. The spirits aren't idiots. You can't just show up with please and smile, you need to form a pact with them, proving that your ideals and plans align with their standards. Only then they will share their immense power. Whether you're on keyboard or controller, the basic mechanics feel smooth. Azrael auto shoots basic attacks and you aim with the mouse or analog stick. Playing on controller, I appreciate the aim assist. It locks onto enemies well enough, but it's not perfect. In chaotic battles, it sometimes loses focus if you move too far or push the analog stick too hard while dodging. Azrael is agile, with two stamina bars for quick dashes. This takes a few seconds to refill, and in the heat of battle, the seconds feel like years. The challenge ramps up when you realize Azrael doesn't have temporary invisibility during attacks or skills. In bigger fights, my health bar often plummet to zero mid-move because enemies don't politely wait for you to finish being flashy. And dashing? Not a foolproof escape. Unlike in Souls like there is no temporary immunity, so even your best dodge attempts can leave you eating dirt. Worst case scenario? Dying mid spellcast. Delightful. One thing I love is how the game avoids overloading you with unnecessary mechanics. It sticks to the basics, but uses them cleverly. The world has a floating island vibe with platforms, gaps, and glowing stamina refills. These refills are perfectly placed where dash is essential, adding a platformer twist. It's obvious that devs wrestled with balancing the dash mechanic. During combat exploration, you are limited to two quick dashes before stamina recharges. But in platforming section, the game wisely gives you unlimited dashes to avoid frustration. Solid design choice. Exploring is usually straightforward since the game is pretty linear, but on larger maps, I got lost a few times. A minimap or better hints would have been helpful. Especially in one dungeon, where I wandered in circles like a lost puppy, even if there were some sign helping me along the way. Combat rewards you with Edor Essence, which you can spend in the throne room to upgrade stats like damage, health, and crit chance. These upgrades make battle smoother as you progress. The variety of enemies and their unique abilities keep the gameplay fresh and challenging. Lastly, the decision to limit active spells is a win. For controller players or Steam Deck users, the simple spell assignment system is blessing. No clunky selection wheels, just assign your spell in the menu and get going. Quick step, new indie games hit market every day. And my mission is to help you discover the coolest ones. Subscribe to my channel for more reviews and let's explore them together. Now, let me cast a quick spell and let's get back to the video. As we talk about spells, Azure Arsenal includes a range of spells, but here's the catch. He can only keep 4 active at once, categorized into primary, secondary, utility, and special. Primary spells are bread and butter for dealing damage I made with your mouse or right analog stick. They are often simple attacks like balls or shards, but my go-to is the crystal shards. Why? Because they pierce through enemies, making it super satisfying to mow down a line of bodies. Secondary spells bring more variety but come with longer cooldowns, but my favorite shoots a straight beam of dark magic. Though you can also pick spells that deal area damage, if that's your thing. Controller players beware. Using this smoothly is a bit of struggle. Utility skills are your lifesavers, they keep you alive when things get rough. My favorite, the barrier that bounces projectile back on enemies, doing extra damage. Use it wisely and you can completely flip the odds in a fight. Special skills are the big guns. My personal pick is a dark energy beam, basically a spooky Kamehameha that annihilates everything in its path. You can control its direction, but the downside? As you're completely exposed while casting, so while you are roasting enemies, they can easily smack you or outright kill you. Passive skills may seem like less important, but trust me, they are a big deal. You will unlock various passives as you progress, starting with one slot and eventually expanding to five. My favorite, an explosion that damages enemies and restores some health once they will drop your health to zero. How does it charge? Honestly, I have no clue. It seems tied to a single battle, no matter how long it lasts. For a small dev studio, the story is surprisingly solid. Turns out it started as a book by the game's creator before being adapted into Blackheart game. And you can feel the extra dev compared to your typical indie plot. The game kicks off with the Azriel meeting Neru, who, plot twist, is one of his siblings. The first convo sets the tone. Nero isn't joking around and makes it clear he'd gladly wipe Azir off the map. 
Not long after, Azirat is chosen as a champion by either being Khaled or Cassius, and the adventure begins. Now of the real family, they are greedy, power-hungry sociopaths who sees Azir as an obstacle to the throne of Kratos. Love, forget it. Contact with other beings is forbidden, and one sibling was harshly punished for even attempting it. Azir has to keep his new powers a secret because if his father or siblings find out, he'll be branded a traitor and executed. But here is the twist. His older sister, the king's advisor, discovers his secrets not long after the start of the adventure. Instead of ratting him out, she decides to use him for her own gain. Classic real family drama, right? <laughs> and the mom? Let's just say she's not winning any parenting awards. Don't expect her to show up with snacks of words of encouragement. That said, there is a secret cutscene with your father that's worth fighting. It gives a better look at his twisted personality. Oh, and there is another reason why the family is so hostile toward Azirel, but I will leave that for you to uncover. I really like the art style, full of cool visual effects and has a distinct vibe that sticks throughout the game. The world and maps have their eerie abandoned feel to them. It's like these places were once full of life but are now just forgotten ruins. At the same time there is no lack of details, local flora, decorative elements and other bits makes the world feel alive despite its emptiness. The interface stands out too. Some dialogues elements have a neon-like glow while others lean into pastel tones creating a unique visual mix. And of course, what's a good atmosphere without the right music? The ambient soundtrack adds to the forgotten vibe with a bang distracting while the battle tracks ramp up the drama and intensity when things get heated. As much as I enjoyed the game, it's not without the flaw. The current 1.0 version has fair share of bugs and glitches. Hopefully the first patch will clear some of them. Most of the bugs aren't game breaking, but they can be frustrating. For example, once my character fell endlessly until they died. Another time I dashed out of the battle zone during a fight, there was also an instance where I triggered a fight by stepping on land, only to find myself stuck outside the combat area due to a blockade. Control issues popped up too. In the front room, when trying to use the portal, I often had to switch to the mouse to select maps because the Xbox controller didn't work properly there. There are some design flaws as well. I got lost a few times on larger maps, especially in one dungeon, with no map system to track where you have been. It's easy to wander aimlessly. Once Azriel even hinted I should go back to the front room, but that was the only time the game gave me clear guidance. Well, there's a situation that pops up once your presence is needed in front room, but you can miss it. I understand waiting to maintain an air of mystery, but a few more hints or basic map wouldn't hurt. The early stages of the story can also be a bit confusing, since the player is thrown with very little context. Maybe this was intentional to reflect the unwelcome atmosphere of the palace and its scheming inhabitants, but still, some clarity would have been nice. Despite the bugs and occasional design hiccups, Blackheart is worth playing. The world is interesting and the story is engaging, especially if you are into dramas about royals stabbing each other in the back, figuratively or not. While the difficulty fluctuates, sometimes too easy, sometimes unfairly hard, the death system is forgiving. You respawn at the nearest altar and keep the essence you've collected up to the point, making grinding, if you need it, a bit easier. But let's talk about the price. At around $20, I feel it's a little steep for the current state of the game. Don't get me wrong, the story is good and the visuals are fantastic, but the bugs were more annoying than they should have been at that price point. Even if they were not annoying at all, still for that price there should be far less of them. That said, the game isn't overly long, which I actually prefer. The story and the gameplay feel sharp and focused, without unnecessary padding or meaningless collectable to collect, clogging up your inventory. Sure, there is more I can tell you about the game, but where is fun is spoiling everything. So, should you give a Blackheart a try? Absolutely. The bugs will eventually be polished out and what's already here is solid, enjoyable experience. Blackheart is definitely worth a shot. See ya and 